Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa ba'd After the message was sent to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he began to call the people to Islam and as we remember he started from the blessed city of Makkah al-Muqarramah which at that time was filled with the worship of idols um, and the Kaaba itself had over 300 idols subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent this final messenger to humanity to mankind to call them back to the righteous path of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for that period where he began to preach in Makkah and subsequently migrated to Yathrib, which would later on be changed to be called Madinatul Madawwara or Madinatul Nabi, that is the city of light or the city of the Prophet ﷺ, because of how much they accepted him and they welcomed him and they you know, allowed him to be part of their city and to even be the leader of the city, with the exception of those who were hypocrites, who were munafiqun, those who had in their hearts a level of disease that made them want to turn away from faith, even though they pretended to have that faith. The Prophet Sallallahu still continued to call to the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And one of the beautiful moments that we find that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala really granted victory to him is in this particular uh, Jews, this particular um, portion of the Quran, the six Jews of the Quran. And this ayah, I would have wanted to bring it at the end of the series, but I'm bringing it here because it exists here. And this is the ayah in Surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth chapter of the Noble Quran, and verse 3. And not the entire verse itself, but just a portion of the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radhitu lakum al-Islam deena. This is a verse that it was said to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu by the Jews that verily in your book, a Jewish man said to him that verily in your book, there is a verse that if it was revealed to us, we would have taken that day it was revealed as a day of celebration. And what is that verse? This Jewish rabbi quoted this particular verse or this particular portion of the verse, this ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that on this day I have perfected your religion. And I have chosen for you Islam as that which you will follow. And it is that which is pleasing to me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this is what is pleasing to me and what would be pleasing to you for the one who says, I am a believer. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied and said that this verse which you have mentioned is a verse that was revealed to our noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the day of Arafah, the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, and it was revealed to him on the plains of Arafah, precisely ala Jabal al-Rahmah, on the mountain of Rahmah. And this verse in itself talks about the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon mankind and bestowed upon those who are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their Lord and pleased with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as their Prophet and pleased with the deen that they practice al-Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know that Islam came to reform character, to reform the mindset, to, to in a way build people to such a degree that they are able to help others and see the benefit they bring to society. And that's why from the previous episode, we talked about the importance of having good akhlaq, good character, which is one of the things that Islam brings forth or teaches us to have. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said, Inni makarim al Verily, I have been raised in order to perfect character, to build good character. So a person who does not have good character, regardless of how much ilm that they might have, they have missed a very integral part of what Islam comes to teach us. And in that character, it includes catering to all that you cater to, being good and being just and being fair, not just to those who practice the same religion or faith with you, but even those who do not practice the same faith with you. Being open-minded, being uh, open-minded to accept truth, even if it is against those that are from your tribe or from your clan or from the same faith that you practice, you must be able to establish truth and establish justice. Regardless of whether you vibe with your tribe, this is a normal thing that everyone experiences where you only feel closer to someone from your tribe. Islam came to dispel all of that and made us all brothers so long as we practice the faith as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. 
فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And remember the mercy of Allah upon you when you were all inimical or you had enmity between yourselves. وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And Allah united your hearts and made you one and brought you close and built that brotherhood between you where you saw a person more beloved to you, not because they were from your same tribe or they were from your area or they resided close to you or they were your direct neighbors alone, but because of the faith that you practiced and that is what led to Ukhuwatul Islamiyyah, the Muslim Brotherhood that spanned across the globe until today with over Five, over 1 billion practicing Islam and over how many more? Hundreds of millions of others who might not be Muslims, but they revere Islam. They revere the Muslims. They revere our character, revere our approach to things. They respect what we have and what we respect because we also show that respect. Then that is the, that is the sign that the faith that we practice has enabled us to build a good character and build a good community with those whom we reside with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed this verse on the plains of Arafah to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as part of that parting gift he left for the ummah because on the plains of Arafah, which was the hajj that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed, it was known as hajjatul wada'. It was known as the farewell hajj. And after that hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take back his messenger to him as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a few, a few moments or a few months after performing his farewell hajj and only hajj that he performed in his lifetime. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. May Allah reunite us with our noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May he accept from us our good deeds, forgive us our shortcomings. Aquli kawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.